Who is the most frightening serial killer in your opinion? Part 1. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, and share our channel thread tonic. Account 1. Oscar Derlewanger. He crosses the line from average war criminal to serial killer. He was a mass murderer, sadist, rapist, and pedophile who got to live out all his sick fantasies while fighting for the Nazis in WW2. In February 1942, in the bleak landscapes of Belarus, Oscar Derlewanger's unit embarked on anti-gang operations. Here, amid the frozen fields, Derlewanger's cruelty knew no bounds. Timothy Snyder's chilling account details his preferred method, herding locals into barns, setting them ablaze, and mercilessly gunning down any who attempted escape. Fast forward to the summer of 1944, Operation Bagration unfolds, and Derlewanger's unit faces heavy losses against the Red Army. Yet, from the ashes, it rises anew, reformed into a Sturm Brigade. In the heart of Warsaw, Derlewanger's horrors reach their peak. Massacres, rapes, and hospitals set ablaze with patients inside. The dates and locations serve as grim markers in a history stained by unspeakable atrocities. Edit. As a post-war prisoner, he was left in a room with some polished guys who effectively beat him to death. Sweet, sweet justice. Account 2. Robert Berdella. Describing his murders as being some of my darkest fantasies becoming my reality, Berdella pleaded guilty and was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for the first-degree murder of one of his victims, Larry Pearson, in August 1988 and would later plead guilty to one further charge of first-degree murder and four charges of second-degree murder in December 1988. Berdella became known as the Kansas City Butcher due to his practice of extensively dissecting his victims' bodies, which he would then dispose of in garbage bags, and the Collector due to the movie which he stated was the basis of the fantasies behind the modus operandi of his crimes. Account 3 Dagmar Overby, she is a Danish serial killer and absolutely stone cold. At the time, you could adopt children from the newspaper for varied reasons. Could not afford the child, it was out of wedlock. These things. And she would search these and take the payment, and within hours murder the children in the most casual way ever. Dump them in the river because it was on your way, or throw them in the furnace. One instance, a lady came back after her child because she had a change of mind. But Dagmar already murdered that toddler, so she found a lookalike, adopted that child, and gave it back. How she got caught was similar. A mom wanted her child back, and she gave so stupid excuses the police was forced to get involved. They found numerous dead babies in her apartment, but Dagmar was keen on confessing. She got the death penalty. And before this case for about a 100 years, the death penalty was just pro forma. The king would pardon you. But in this case, people really wanted her head. It was overturned to life in prison despite mob justice just waiting, but it also created entire laws to protect single mums and bastard children. To me, the scary part is that it took so deranged actions before protections of some of society's weakest was in place. Account 4. Catherine Knight. She is not technically a serial killer, but she is truly terrifying. She was the first Australian woman to be sentenced to life in prison without parole. Even her mother knew she was psychotic and warned her husband, John Price, that she could get dangerously violent. She tried to strangle her husband on their wedding night, conked him over the head with a frying pan, which broke his skull, and put her baby on the train tracks. Later on, she killed John Price by stabbing him at least 37 times, both in the front and back of his body. As if that's not enough, she skinned him and hung the skin from a meat hook, then decapitated him, cooked his body, and fed it to the kids. Account 5. Ukrainian serial killer Andrei Chikatilo, dubbed the Butcher of Rostov, he sexually assaulted, murdered, and mutilated at least 52 women and children between 1978 and 1990. Chikatilo confessed to 56 murders. He was tried for 53 murders in April 1992. He was convicted and sentenced to death for 52 of these murders in October 1992, although the Supreme Court of Russia ruled in 1993 that insufficient evidence existed to prove his guilt in nine of those killings.
Chikatilo was executed by gunshot in February 1994. Chikatilo was known as the Rostov Ripper and the Butcher of Rostov because he committed most of his murders in the Rostov Oblast of the Russian SFSR. Account 6. Lewis Hutchinson, insane doctor, who had his own castle in a remote estate in Jamaica. Used to invite people over, then snipe them, then drag them into a sinkhole so animals could eat them. Hanged in Spanish Town, 1723, he is one of the first known serial killers on record. Account 7. The Toy Box Killer was pretty messed up. David Parker Ray, also known as the Toy Box Killer, was an American kidnapper, torturer, serial rapist, and suspected serial killer. Though no bodies were found, Ray was accused by his accomplices of killing several women, including one male with long hair who Ray mistook for a woman, and was suspected by the police to have murdered as many as 60 women from Arizona and New Mexico while living in Elephant Butte, New Mexico. Ray was convicted of kidnapping and torture in 2001, for which he received a lengthy sentence, but he was never convicted of murder. He died of a heart attack about one year after his convictions in two cases. Ray used soundproofing methods on a semi-trailer, which he called his toy box, and equipped it with items used for sexual torture. He would kidnap about four or five women a year, holding each of them captive for around two to three months. During this period, he would sexually abuse his victims and often torture them with surgical instruments, sometimes involving his friends, wife, or even his dog. Then Ray would drug them with barbiturates in an attempt to erase their memories of what had happened before abandoning them by the side of the road. Account 8. Israel Keys. He had just shy of an 11-year, that we know, crime spree. He was intelligent, completely unpredictable, and had high knowledge of wilderness survival skills. He travels for most of his killings, making him wildly dangerous. His crimes ranged from robbery to rape, and his planted murder kits are terrifying to think about. Account 9. Mac Ray Edwards. He worked for the California highways and would bury his victims where he'd later pave over them. Not all the bodies have been found yet. Edwards sexually molested and murdered three children in or around 1953. 56. He molested and murdered three more. He later stated that all of his crimes were motivated by a desire for sex. The body of one of Edward's victims was found underneath the Santa Ana Freeway, and he claimed to have disposed of others under the Ventura Freeway. Account 10. John Wayne Gacy for the perfect duplicity of it. He was outwardly considered a pillar of his community while he was murdering and raping young men. He became known as the Killer Clown due to his public performances as a clown prior to the discovery of his crimes. Gacy committed all of his known murders inside his ranch-style house. Typically, he would lure a victim to his home and dupe them into donning handcuffs on the pretext of demonstrating a magic trick. He would then rape and torture his captive before killing his victim by either asphyxiation or strangulation with a garrote. Twenty-six victims were buried in the crawl space of his home, and three were buried elsewhere on his property. Four were discarded in the Des Plaines River. Account 11. Richard Ramirez. Ramirez was convicted of 13 counts of murder, five attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. The judge who upheld his 19 death sentences remarked that his deeds exhibited cruelty, callousness, and viciousness beyond any human understanding. No rhyme or reason, only opportunity. It didn't matter your age or gender, no consistency with weapons, he would kill you with a gun or a hammer. And he looks terrifying. Account 12. Luis Garavito. Raped, tortured, brutally murdered hundreds of children. His wiki is one of the most fucked up ones I've seen. He will be released soon due to a new law that unfortunately didn't include him. He wants to work with disadvantaged children when he gets out. Account 13. Ed Kemper. Yep. Came here to say Big Ed. Articulate, intelligent, personable, engaging, entertaining, and absolutely enormous. It could be easy to forget he is a living, breathing human monster. Edit. And if you ever listen to a book on tape from the 80s, there's a good chance it was read to you by Ed Kemper. Account 14. 
Dennis Rader, the BTK killer, active between 1974 and 1991. Rader occasionally killed or attempted to kill men and children. He typically targeted women. His victims were often bound, sometimes with objects from their homes and either suffocated with a plastic bag or manually strangled with a ligature. Raider stole keepsakes from his female victims, including underwear, licenses, and personal items. He often sent taunting letters to police and media outlets describing the details of his crimes. After a 13-year hiatus, Raider resumed sending letters in 2004, leading to his 2005 arrest and subsequent guilty plea. He is currently serving 10 consecutive life sentences at the El Dorado Correctional Facility. Account 15. Zodiac Killer for me. He used ciphers, but I don't think he was a genius. He got lucky because the different police forces kept failing to share vital information. And I think the wanting trophies for the afterlife was an act. He wasn't mad, he just wanted to be infamous. Add on the fact that he could be alive still. Laughing from an old folks' home at all the people trying to figure out who he is.